Alright, it is time for another ASUS motherboard review. This time, it is the... ASUS ROG Strix B580XE Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Welcome back to Remington, where we provide you with tech reviews as well as amazing PC build ideas without breaking your bank. If you enjoy our content, make sure to smash the subscribe as well as the bell buttons. Okay, so as with every motherboard review that we have done, we are going to go through the accessories. But we are not going to go through all accessories, you can watch them in our previous ASUS motherboard reviews. So there are few things that are worth mentioning though. So first things first, we have this thing. This is a USB-C to audio jack. Uh, maybe Gordon can explain to us why is this included? Okay, because for this particular motherboard, they have a USB audio out to the back. So naturally, this is probably for those USB Type-C headphones as well as speakers. It allows you to connect a 2.5 millimeter speaker to the USB audio out. I'm not very sure why it's included because there's already a 3.5 millimeter line out like any other motherboard, but anyway, it's included. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and the next thing that is worth mentioning, maybe you guys know about it, but we'll talk about it anyway. This is the Hyper M.2 existing card. Okay, so basically this is a expansion card where you can put up to 4 Gen 4 SSDs and you can plug it into your existing slot inside your motherboard. We are not going to do this because we are not so rich, we don't have 4 Gen 4 SSDs to splurge on. Right, Gordon? Yeah, even I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have seen our socials, you have liked our posts, you know what we're going to do. Okay, so before that, we're going to run you through what's so XE and what's so special about this motherboard. So let's carry on with that first. I shall take you through on a little more in-depth on the ASUS ROG Strix B550 XE. So if you've seen our previous review on the B550-F, uh, it looks pretty similar, but there are a couple of differences that to take note of. Now seeing that this fella sits above the B550E, which in turn sits above the B550F, there are a couple of enhancements on this board that the B550F does not have. One of which is the two digit postcode uh, display right over here. This is good if you are trying to overclock your RAM, you're trying to overclock your the CPU, or you're just clicking around the settings here, something goes wrong. Always good to have this fella down here because you may not get display on your set. It may do a little bunch of poops and peeps and uh, LED displays here, but this will give you more in detail on what exactly is wrong. Second thing that is good is the USB Type-C front connector here, which uh, the B550F did not have. I made quite a fair bit of noise about back then. But yeah, the Type-C connector is very fun. But the style of the show on this particular motherboard actually is these two slots right over here. Now, most B550 motherboards, what you have is a PCIe 4.0 times 16 here, and the rest of the slots are PCIe 3.0 times 4. So only the first one is 16. On most other motherboards, any other full length slot is probably PCIe 3.0 times 4 at most. For this board, however, Azus decided to do a little party trick on it. Something that you often only see on the higher end X570 motherboards. If you plug a single GPU here, for example, like this uh, ASUS Tough 3060 Ti that I have plugged in. So this guy is PCIe 4.0 x 16, right? So you may be thinking, if I plug a second GPU right over here, oh my goodness, this guy's gonna get throttled. Cause this fella over here, you think it's PCI 3.0 x 4? Actually, no. Because what actually happens in this case, it's actually like a lot of higher end X570 motherboards. This guy becomes PCIe 4.0 times 8. This guy also becomes PCIe 4.0 times 8. So yes, you could run two GPUs in NVLink configuration provided you had the NVLink bridge down here. Or if you don't have the NVLink bridge, yes, you could run two GPUs in let's say like a render config, deep learning machine learning config, that kind of thing. And both will have PCIe 4.0 times 8. But there is a reason why this party trick is here. So let me get this guy out first. So this is another thing that's special about this board itself. It comes with this PCIe 4.0 HyperX uh, red card. So as Mel has mentioned earlier, it has uh, four slots inside there for four times uh, PCIe 4.0 SSDs. So what actually you're supposed to do with it is that either one or two ways, you have the red card sitting here, 
So what you have is this guy PCIe 4.0 times 8, PCIe 4.0 times 8. So so you can run not only your GPU, but you also have enough bandwidth to run four SSDs down here as well. But like Mel said, we're not gonna get to testing this one because I don't really have that much uh, PCIe 4 SSDs on hand. It'll be sweet if you could get a couple of those uh, 980 Pros, right Mel? Yep, 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 yep. So, uh, hint, hint to some people enticing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll get around as to what the heck we're actually gonna use this capability for. Okay, as you have seen in the footage just now, we have elected to put both of the ASUS GPUs down there. First slot is the RTX 3080, the, son, the second slot is the RTX 3060 Ti. Now that we've done that and we've reset the BIOS, so I'm going to take you through some features of the BIOS itself. As I have no, we covered this in the previous videos, like the one on the B550F, but nevertheless, this is a good opportunity for me to take you through. Okay, right, as you can see, this is my BIOS right over here. You can see it's the latest version. Some of these I have already taken you through already, so the only thing that I'm going to be looking for... Okay, yes, because first and foremost, enable rebar size by This is to enable the feature for smart access memory for those uh, big Navi GPUs, but since it's rumored that Nvidia GPUs are going to be supporting this feature sometime soon, so good to enable this. We come to onboard device configuration, yes. The only thing that's a little bit special here is actually this. If you come down right over here, this is the one thing that's a little bit special for this board itself, which is the fact that the two slots, you can come to here, set the bandwidth. So it's either auto mode, we're gonna leave it auto mode since it's GPU sitting down there. PCI rate mode is the one mode to be activated if either of those two slots has that ASUS Hyper M.2 adapter card sitting on it itself. So if let's say you have the GPU on the very first slot and you have the Hyper M.2 card on the second slot, so what you do is on the first slot you leave it on auto and the second one you leave it on PCIe RAID mode. So I'm not going to put it in PCIe RAID mode since I have a GPU sitting on the second slot itself. You can come to here, you can switch the last one to times 4 to times 2. So right, there are a couple of other things as well. There's also, yeah, you can set for them. You want Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, 4, and 4. The same goes for the second slot itself. Now, normally for most other B550 motherboards, only the first one is Gen 4. For this one, both the first and the second slot is Gen 4. Then you can set like the M.2 slot on the motherboard, wherever it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh yes, this is the very last one, the one that's only PCIe times 4. Yeah, that one you can set it to Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 3. I'm going to just go ahead and do up some of the settings down here to get this guy up and running for our next step. Now that we've booted into Windows itself, so as you can see on the display in front of me, I have a couple of things open. Number one being Octane Bench, number two being GPU-Z. Now they all are here for a reason, I'll get to that in a bit. So let me just get over to here, Hardware Info. So on Hardware Info down here, you can see I have two GPUs, a 3080, and a 3060 Ti. So because of that, the one thing that you will notice down here is that PCI x 16 4.0, it's right now at PCI x 8 4.0, it's gone back to 1.1 due to power saving because the GPUs are not doing anything at this point in time. So let's get the GPU to do something. I'm gonna run Octane on both of them and you're gonna notice a couple of observations. Number one, the 3080 is now at PCI x 8 4.0. The 3060 Ti is also at PCIe x 8 4.0, so pretty much similar to a mid to high end X570 motherboard. So the second thing that I would like to point out to you actually is the great disparity between these two GPUs in terms of temperature. The 3060 Ti is the one that's right below the 3080, so let's see what happens as they render. But as you can see right over here, while the 3060 Ti is hovering at a nice uh, 54 degrees Celsius on my very open air test bench down here, what's happening here is that the 3080 is running significantly hotter, almost like a 15 degrees hotter. So you may be wondering what on earth is actually going on here. Uh, well, the answer is very simple actually. As uh, Mel and I pointed out earlier in the video, the third fan, the outermost fan on the card, is a pass-through card. 
Uh, there is no PCB on there, the air just goes straight right through. So what's actually happening here is that some of the exhaust heat yeah, from the 3060 Ti is blowing straight to and right into the intake of the last fan on the 3080 itself, which is actually contributing to the heat on the 3080. That explains the big temperature difference between them, 54, 74 degrees. That's pretty much 20 degrees difference. I think if it was a second RTX 3080 below, I wouldn't be surprised to see this guy hit 80 degrees cause uh, a 3080 sitting right below will generate much more heat than a 3060 Ti. Right, the score here is about 900, so this is basically about equivalent to like 2 thumb, oh sorry, not 2 thumb, 3 thumb 2080 Ti's. So yeah, you can see how powerful these two GPUs are actually. So if you're gonna run like a multi-GPU solution, you have a couple of options. One would be you run two blower cards. As of this moment, there's only one brand that has blowers and they're only in 3090s. The other option is of course if you put a water block on both cards. So with this situation in mind, maybe my little feedback to Asus would be um, your turbo line of blower cards for touring were pretty awesome. So it would be good yet to see like the Ampere versions of your turbo cards releasing really for use in scenarios such as this. Right, so after playing around with these two fellas, as you can see how this is a B550 that's a little bit of an oddball. What I mean by an oddball, that's running a PCA 4.0 times 8, 4.0 times 8. This is basically a B550 that's trying to be a mid-range and above X570. So I'm not quite sure what Azos was thinking when they came up with this board, but I can think of a couple of reasons. Number one was to probably give a B550 motherboard that's able to run this. Because only when you have dual PCI 4.0x8 will you be able to actually run both this as well as one GPU over here. So you could have like the GPU sitting over here and this card sitting on this slot where this guy is now. Or you can have it the other way around. PCIe M.2 card sits here and the GPU sits right over here. Nevertheless, it is a very nicely fully featured board. This feature may not be something that you may use unless either A, you run dual GPU like what you're seeing here, or B, you run a single GPU plus this card down here, which will actually give you a grand total of four M.2s plus five, and another one right below down there gives you a 6 times M.2 SSDs, 5 of which are PCIe 4.0. So the last one right at the bottom down there is uh, PCIe 3.0. Uh, what do I think of the board? Like I said, just some, it's an odd ball. But it's an odd ball that I really, really like. At least it gives me the flexibility in a B550 board that I don't find in any other B550 motherboard. With that in mind, yeah, I will definitely recommend this to any of my customers should they have this specific requirement in mind. So Gordon gives his customers and new viewers out there the thumbs up. And likewise, if you like this video, give up the thumbs up. Also drop down in the comments if you're going to try out this board or you're just going to go for X570 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a B550 trying to be an X570. Yeah, so choose either one, pay more or have Two slots for a very interesting B550 motherboard. I really want to know what weed were also smoking when they came up with this color. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Must be good shit. I want some of it. I think because holiday season is coming, we're going to have a lot of cuts. If you don't want to spend money X570, I can come up with something. We have two cards. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm not Azus. He's not Azus. If you haven't watched our previous video, the 3060Ti versus the 3080, where we use this board also, make sure to check out the video. Check out our other Asus motherboard reviews. So for God and I, we say goodnight, goodbye again. <laughs>